It's time for Show Off Sunday, where everyone has a chance to show off their own car, and here's this week's winner. The Lincoln Town Car got started, you know, really got going through the 80s. They were all a V8 powered rear wheel drive body on frame. This car, being it, even though it made in 2006, is still the body on frame, which means it's not a unibody. It's an actual chassis frame with the body on top of it, much like a uh, pickup truck. Still a pretty big car. Um, the earlier town cars were, were powered by a 460 V8 engine, and I had a 1979 town car with a 400. Uh, right at the late 70s, um, cars started get, getting bigger and bigger through the 70s with bigger engines, and then all of a sudden the, the uh, gas crisis and all that you can do research on. Engine started getting smaller. My 79 had a 400 in it. That car, it was a town coupe, which was basically just like the town car but only a two-door version of it but it would match bumper to bumper to a uh, full-size Dodge 2500 with the extended cab long bed that's right extended cab long bed it matched bumper to bumper it was a huge car this town car this 2006 is part of the platform that's dubbed as the uh, Ford's Panther platform which includes the Ford Crown Victoria which you know a lot of the police cruisers back in the 90s and, and early 2000s. I mean, all, all we, only even up to a couple of years ago, uh, some, some places were still using the Ford Crown Victoria, but includes the Mercury Grand Marquise, which was basically the same car, just a little bit more fancier um, than the Crown Vic. And then you have the Lincoln Town Car. And then also for a short period of time, they had a Mercury Marauder, which I'm gonna get one of those just because that's, that's a cool name i mean car cars today just you know i mean you can have a a really nice <clears throat> nice cool car like a bmw or something like that but they call it a, as an example a 740i I mean, how boring is that? This car is um, a daily driver, and it has to date 487,000 miles on the original build, which means the original transmission, original engine. Well, forgive me, 486. But that's quite a lot. Um, I bought it maybe four years ago. It had probably 440,000 miles. I originally paid $900 for this car. I bought it from... This car used to belong to a limo company in Chicago, and I'll tell you a little bit about the executive package here in a little bit. But uh, I bought it from a guy who bought it from that limo company. He drove around for a while and then it developed what he said was a leak in the back of the right engine head. Leaking down and making steam come up, you know, along the firewall and everything. Well, as it turns out, it wasn't a leak out of the engine head. It was a leak from the uh, heater core, which uh, is about $35. And you don't even have... in this this car these cars are so easy to work on as far as change a heater core out you don't even have to pull the dash out now it's a pain in the ass mind you to change the heater core but not having to to remove the dash i changed the heater core in about an hour and a half try that on <clears throat> on your uh honda civic or toyota probably all in all i i probably you know in the four years probably put you know a couple thousand dollars in parts you know parts are not very expensive for these and you know like a lot of parts interchange between the crown vic and the grand marquise because you know like i said they have the same engine there she is right there 4.6 liter v8 not to be con confused with ford's 4.6 liter v6 which was used in an like say an Expedition or some of the F-150 pickup trucks. But I recently, um, like I said, parts are cheap. I recently just replaced the intake manifold and I think the intake manifold was like $110. I mean, you probably can't even get an air filter from BMW for Audi for, for less than that. And I didn't really have to change the intake. It was more just a maintenance thing. It was just like, you know what? I'm just gonna just go ahead and, and change it along with the EGR valve and all that kind of stuff. Just to, something with this many miles on it, you kind of got to do some preventative maintenance and stuff like that, you know, as the, the only pulley that I haven't changed is the, for the air conditioning compressor. So, which, you know, I don't know if it's, if it's able to be changed with just the bearing or, or the pulley, or if we got, just got to get in a whole new compressor, but that's the next thing I want to, I want to change. You know, like I said, I have no many thousand of times that thing has turned, but you never know. These engines, um, just been known to be 
very reliable. You know, I, I knew a guy who owned a taxi company and he wouldn't even buy Crown Vicks and Mercury Grand Marquis and even some of these town cars. He wouldn't even buy them unless they had 200,000 miles or more because he can get them for practically nothing. And if he needed to get an engine or something like that, you, you know, he might be able to go four or $500 at a wrecking yard and be able to get one. But back to the package, um, the executive is actually the kind of the base package. It's probably the least fanciest and you're all your, uh, Town car limousines are practically the executive package. You know, they're black with black interior, most of them. You know, you might find some find some white ones and stuff like that. But most of the time I've seen these executives, you know, and this executive package starting in 2003, I believe, you know, you couldn't even get this. If you, if you wanted this car, you had to have a Ford fleet number, which, you know, if you were a taxi company or a limousine, some sort of livery service company, then that's where you'd, you know, have that ford fleet number to be able to get it other than that they wouldn't sell it to you you know they had other packages that were a little bit more fancier like say with a sunroof and had maybe had a few gizmos inside and and whatnot um like a signature series a cartier series they even had a jack nicholas series no not the act you may be thinking the actor jack nicholson but no jack nicholas a professional golfer and this this uh package actually had green shag carpet in it that um you know i guess as large as a car is you could probably set up your own putting green i also owned a 1990 99 town car that was the uh, congressional sedan series and it had like a half landau top and then a bunch of chrome fake luggage rack type things on the back of it not really into that kind of stuff myself matter of fact you know this car has probably got too much chrome as it is as far as i'm concerned but that's the way it is and I like it but the other thing i want to point out is the uh is the l on here which in a, like a lot of other vehicles stands for the longer wheelbase pretty much add you know did they add it to the whole entire car because no they didn't really add it to the back that looks normal they didn't really add it to the front that all looks normal they added it right there in the door in this for the back seating area. I mean, look at that. That is, you know, it opens clear out, you know, to, to, to I mean, if you're a, a 600 pound sumo wrestler, you'll be able to get in there with ease. I mean, that door is huge. It just sticks way out there. You wouldn't want to open this up on a side street and have a busload of nuns just come screaming by and just rip that door right off of there. That seat is all the way back and I am six foot three inches tall and I got plenty of leg room. I can almost stretch my entire hand from the front there and I got tons of leg room back here. Please ignore my stuff. Sorry about that. This is a daily driver like I said. Typical what you know luxury cars have is you know you got all town cars have their heating and AC vents right there you know but this particular one being a chauffeur car has the uh, vanity mirrors all that. It's got, got two of them you know you got your controls and stuff for radio and heater and and uh air conditioning and a little place here to to put a uh, tissue box and then you get this unique button here front seat yeah so i guess uh you know obviously if you, the person sitting in that seat get a little more leg room or annoy the passenger in front of there just sitting there going back and forth you got a center console there you got two power outlets here and a place for your uh, cord to come out with your power in the laptop or your cell phone and if that's not enough you have here in the door an ashtray and another one and they're actually uh that one, to, you know, that's where another lighter, a cigar lighter, be right in there. And if that isn't enough, you got one on this side too. I mean, heaven forbid, you'd have to ask ask the driver to borrow his, or your passenger sitting next to you, or pretty much the driver probably just said, "All right, it's time to smoke," and everybody light up. But in here, you know, everything's pretty much standard, and all your controls you got over there, and seat controls, and window controls, and mirror controls over there. You know, the thing is, this this car is is nice, and it's just as comfy as the most fanciest town car package it uh it's not too fancy like there you know this thing doesn't have tire pressure monitors which you know i mean i can check my own tire pressure i don't need any of that but i do love the analog clock that's a sign of a luxury vehicle having the, the uh analog clock somewhere on the dash i mean your rolls royce has it and and whatnot i'm not saying this thing's any fancy like rolls royce but hey you know this is probably a forty thousand dollar vehicle when it was brand new well, like I said, I got, I got three favorite things in the car. One is that analog clock right there. And number two, look at that hood. I mean, this is the exact position right about there that I would be sitting at when I'm in this thing. I mean, that hood just stretches way the heck out there. I actually should have seen it on my 79. 
Son of a gun. I mean, th this this car, you know, pretty much arrives before before I do. Man, I, I, maybe there's four favorite things. Because, so, you know, you got this, got the column shift here, you know, just like on a 55 Buick. I mean, I just I just absolutely love that. You know, there's actually third third seating. This deal pops up. It's, it's, it's dang fancy. You open it up this way, and it also opens up that way. All right, four, fourth favorite thing. You know what? I could list a lot of favorite things about this. I, I love these cars. Uh, that hood ornament, I mean... That is just gorgeous. Look at that. I mean, that just, you know, like, if the, you know, the front of this car arrives well before I do. I mean, look at that. Just, just totally announcing the arrival. I mean, if, if that doesn't announce it, then, then I don't know what does. I mean, you pull up in this thing, and it just looks like something important's going on, even if it isn't. But let's face it, we're, you're driving a town car, so it kind of is important. You know, let, let me get this. If you're the only one and you're the driver, you don't really drive a town car. You're driven by a town car. They're just comfort. They just float down the road. That 4.6 um, probably puts over about maybe 240 horsepower or something like that. But the 4.6 that's uh, in the Mercury Marauder, which I mentioned earlier, which is a lot like the, the Grand Marquise, but had different wheels, actually had a floor shift, not a column shift. And uh, th that was almost 400 horsepower. And I think even some of the police interceptor cruisers and stuff like that had a lot a lot more power and you can actually get an aluminum intake manifold for this 4.6 and you can put a supercharger on there you can get almost over 500 horsepower out of it but you can really get a lot of horsepower almost all over anything but that's it you know i'm gonna take this car down the back and i'm gonna clean out the bodies that are in the trunk and i'll be already noticing that license plate up in the window i actually lived in green bay wisconsin and that was the actual plate i had on this car but i want to thank uh scotty kilmer for picking this and glad we're able to uh share this car and, and a little bit of information about these and and you know go go get one for yourself you won't regret it this week's video and remember to have your car video highlighted here on my channel check this out so if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos remember to ring that bell